boys and girls. Well, today we're going to read a story called Pass the Energy, Please. Hmm, I wonder what it means to pass the energy. Well, when you pass the energy, that's basically passing the food, which we know gives us the energy we need to move, grow, change, and basically live. So when you say pass the energy, please, you're looking at a food chain where one gives energy to the next, to the next, and to the next. And do you remember, we talked about this a long time ago, what do most food chains generally start with? Yes, the sun. So we're going to take a look at some food chains in our book. Pass the energy, please. And it's written by Barbara Shaw McKinney and illustrated by Chad Wallace. I think he did some great illustrations. See some fabulous detail there. I see that uh, poor snake has definitely met his match in the owl who has taken hold of him in their talons, either to eat for themselves or maybe to feed their owlets. Who knows? Here's our title page. Pass the energy, please. Ah, table of contents. So I know that this book is going to give me some information. Look out, brain. You're going to get another wrinkle. Here we go. Link number one, born in the sun. A remarkable thing about green leafy plant, it makes its own food where animals can't. Mixing carbon dioxide, water and sun, mother nature has photosynthesis fun. A sugary food homemade in the leaf travels through stems bringing relief. This energy needed to blossom and grow is shared by new shoots and roots down below. When roots reach for water, there's magic. Osmosis! Minerals pass through the roots in small doses. These liquefied vitamins found in earth's floor make the soil a natural health food store. It's the same in the sea in the watery world where seaweed and kelp grow swirly and curled. Light shimmering down in merely a glimmer lets plants feed themselves or some fishy swimmer. Quite independent on land or at sea, a green plant produces its own energy. Like a true power plant, the energy is stored. Green plants deserve a conservation award. A plant by itself is a link all alone. Its food chain future remains unknown. Till someone comes by with the greatest of ease, and firmly demands, pass the energy, please. Link number two, the big herbivore crew. The biggest of herbivores top off their chains by eating huge portions of grasses and grains. Buffaloes, hippos, and shy manatees are empowered by plants in great quantities. Saved by their size, even plant-eating dinosaurs lived side by side with meat-eating carnivores. Gorillas love stems and pandas bamboo. The links in their chains add up to just two. Whether leaves, nuts, and honey, or tender young shoots, sweet ripened berries, flowers, or fruit, Vegetarian power is equal in strength to the meat found in chains of a longer length. Energy passing from one to another is offered by earth to each animal brother. A chain unbroken along the way links plants and creatures from day to day. So our herbivores, they eat the plants. And if it's a really big herbivore, then it might be the end of its food chain. It might just be two links, or maybe not. Link number three, a chain on the plane. 
A sea of grass on the African plain provides for great herds with the help of the rain. Grazing in harmony, plenty for all, plant power makes them grow healthy and tall. But instinct reminds the gazelles and giraffes and rhinos and elephants nursing their calves. Beware of your neighbors. All grazes on guard. Carnivorous cats live in your backyard. A streamlined cheetah designed for the chase runs like the wind and soon wins the race. A graceful gazelle, nature's gift to the cat, gives the feline a future and he's thankful for that. Passing the energy needed to live is a difficult thing for a creature to give. But a chain unbroken along the way links life on the plain from day to day. So the sun gave energy to the grass, the grass gave energy to the gazelle, and the gazelle gave energy to the cheetah. So there's the links in that chain. A chain of four on the meadow floor. A milkweed pod explodes into seed and parachutes down where the meadow mice feed. A nibbling mouse gets his scamper and scurry straight from the seed that he eats in a hurry. But nothing's more tempting than mice on the run to the wrigglers and squigglers who bask in the sun. Snakes relish rodents and often depend on mice for the slither to hunt and defend. So we've got the seeds from the plant to the mouse to the snake. Hmm, where else could we go? The satisfied snake is bulging with prey. There's our mouse inside our snake. But danger awaits at the end of his day. Nocturnal creatures, those are the ones that come out at night, need energy too to see in the dark and do what they do. Uh, alert is the owl who swivels her head when she hears the snake rustle a leaf in his bed. Her wide yellow eyes designed for the night get their glow from the reptile captured in flight. Passing the energy needed to live is a difficult gift for a creature to give, but a chain unbroken along the way links life in the meadow from day to day. So that snake gave its energy to the owl. Plankton surf the sea. Their plants adrift with energy, too tiny for the eye to see. Zillions float invisibly. Now zooplankton is just slightly bigger. Gobble them up with ravenous vigor. Power boosted by their prey, zooplankton swim on their way. Unaware that they've been followed, gone in a gulp, they've been swallowed. Like an order to go in an ocean deli, they're digested in an anchovy's belly. Eventually, the seafood meal is served to a starving seal. The energy stored is given away to the dappled seal all black and gray. So it's hard to see, but there are teeny tiny green dots in this book. That's the phytoplankton, which is eaten by the zooplankton, which is eaten by the anchovy, which is eaten by the seal. Does it end there? Let's find out. Pass the energy, please. A risk for the seal who pays a high price is a bear by the breathing hole found in the ice. Supper will surf for polar bear who waits for the mammal who needs some air. She thickens his blubber to wear in a storm and polar bear thanks her for keeping him warm. Fattening up so the arctic cold gives chubby young cubs a chance to grow old. Passing the energy needed to live is a difficult gift for a creature to give but a chain unbroken along the way links life in the Arctic from day to day.
So we had the zoo phytoplankton give to the zooplankton, to the anchovy, to the seal, and then the seal became our polar bear meal. Goldenrod growing all mustard and green is a natural, magical food machine. When the plant full of chlorophyll captures the sun, energy is born and the food chain's begun. Caterpillar looking for a luscious lunch spots the plant with its crispy crunch. While chomping away on his leafy treat, power is passed to his six pairs of feet. To a spider in search of a scrumptious snack, the plump caterpillar is ripe for attack. She spins a silk drag line and drops from a daisy. Full from her supper, soon she feels lazy. A warbler waits in brush on a branch, watching for the spider to give her a chance. She swoops on the spider, so thankful indeed for a heartier meal from a weed than a seed. At the edge of the wood, a weasel is stalking, slinking in the shadows, he's really out stalking. There's not enough time for the songbird to fly. She gives him swiftness and keenness of eye. Watch out, Mr. Weasel, who lurks at your back. A sly red fox is hot on your tracks. The weasel is energy just within reach. Her pups share the prey, a portion for each. Passing the energy needed to live is a difficult thing for a creature to give. But a chain unbroken along the way links life in the woodland from day to day. So this chain was quite a bit longer. So we had energy giving the plant its energy. The, excuse me, the sun giving the plant the energy. Then the caterpillar took energy from the plant. The spider took energy from the caterpillar. Then the bird took energy from the spider. The weasel took energy from the bird. And then the fox took energy from the weasel. Hmm. Now we're down to decomposers on the ground. The animal giants have little to fear, for very few enemies dare to come near. But even top predators, king of their chains, feed hungry scavengers with their remains. So once an animal dies, then its energy goes to our decomposers. The vulture is known as a great opportunist that preys on the fallen in finding its soonest. An energy source does not go to waste. It's passed to each creature that fights for a taste. Beetles attracted to carcass and dung quickly bury their treasure. It's food for the young. And maggots from blowflies will eat what they can, whereas ants store their hoard till hungry again. Moths feed on hares and lay eggs on the site. Their larvae won't have to look far for a bite. They'll find enough energy needed to skitter while cleaning up nature's most natural litter. So even a dead animal's body is not gone to waste. Its energy gets passed to our decomposers who help keep nature's area clean. No visible signs remain of the beast, but living things wait in the soil to feast, something called fungus with tangly thread absorbs even more than the flesh of the dead. And millions of microscopic bacteria attack what's left over in Earth's cafeteria. Earthworms then gobble and tunnel below and mix it all up so new plants can grow. There's that life cycle. As energy is shared by the great and the small, each breakdown releases the best gift of all. To the soil, some nutrients make their escape, and the circle of life takes a wonderful shape. So, now we know that food chains really are important. The energy passes from one to the other, giving energy as it goes 
until it gets to the top. But even then it doesn't stop because eventually that animal or creature dies and its nutrients go back into the soil so the plants can grow and it begins all over again. What a great system Mother Nature has created. Well, scientists, there were a lot of food chains in this book. I want you to think of some food chains that you know around you. Maybe, hmm, I can think of, huh, there's grass, then there's a cow, and then the cow can turn into hamburger, and I can eat it. Huh, a food chain. Or maybe, hmm, in my backyard there's grass, then there's a grasshopper, which gets eaten by a bird, which gets eaten by my cat, and then my cat dies and gets eaten by the decomposers, so food chain. Hmm, I want you to think of a food chain and see what you can create, scientists. All right, food chain away and start that life cycle.